Just like the lead singer of Dream Theater, this episode brings Labrie. So let's all take a lactate together and break down Top Chef Season 21, Episode 3. Let's get cheesy. An emotional start as the remaining 12 chefs are missing Valentine and figuring out how to push on and push through. Rassica and Danny go for a run and try and shoot a Nike commercial. Just do it! Amid a wall of fake looking doors, we meet our guest judges. Actress Clea Duvall and Top Chef All-Star and host of The Chew, Carla Hall. Carla is so excited she tries to shoot heat beams out of her mouth just like Lo Pan from Big Trouble in Little China. Wow. Kristen explains that just three miles outside of Milwaukee is a place called Door County. Doors. This country is known for its scenic Doors. and these cherries. So they want to see what the chefs can do with Door County cherries paired with Doors. The chefs need to choose a random Door. to determine which ingredients they'll have to pair with cherries. Raska gets onions, Danny gets bamboo shoots, Amanda gets yellow mustard, Michelle gets a face hugger from the Alien movies. Ah! Actually, it's ginseng. Charlie gets chocolate. I have no idea what clip I'm going to put there. I hope it's funny. Hey, hey, hey. Good luck, future Jake. <laughs> Kenny gets marshmallows, Dan gets kimchi, Kevin gets black garlic, Savannah gets chicken livers, Kalina gets canned salmon, Laura gets condensed milk, Alicia gets serrano peppers, and Manny gets soy sauce. The chefs get to work pitting their cherries and making a murder scene out of their workstations. Freaking look like a murder scene on my cutting board. Michelle isn't interested in working with fresh face huggers. I have no idea if this will work. But the face huggers aren't picky. Looks like love at first sight to me. Manny is adding some extra steps to his dish that he thinks will help. I'm gonna roast a pork belly and uh, a little prayer. Savannah is busy guessing as to why she's my favorite. I do have a little bit of French background. Then we get a perfect metaphor for how difficult it will be to extinguish these flames that I have for her. Kenny is still stuck on how this challenge started. I used to go to a doors. farm every fall with my family and pick doors. Up. I love doors. <laughs> that is dumb, but I like it. I write these jokes and then I film these jokes and then I hope later that I can edit them together and make them funny. That one's a risk. Just do it. Charlie brags about his love life, but that's not really his focus right now. I have a lot of tricks, but my favorite things are putting flavors together. And then he just outright name drops his favorite two strippers. <laughs> and that's gonna work well with chocolate and cherries. I have a PG version of that joke where I say, and then he just name drops his favorite Aiden Kelly album, but no one knows who Aiden Kelly is. At least, I don't know. This might be a perfect platform for us to promote Aiden Kelly's fantastic album. Do it! Alicia brags that she doesn't need long tongs to work on the grill. Long ones down low. You don't want to lose your hand. I like the burns. There went all the knuckle hairs. Savannah is still trying to narrow down why I love her so much. And she figures out that one reason is that she is... Not a moose. Kevin is still figuring out the English language. Kevin, you feel good over there? I am feel very good over there. Coffee, Mr. Tully? Do I? Yes, have some. Yes, have some. All right, plating begins. Let's get through them. Amanda plates a cherry glazed pork tenderloin with cherry and mustard mustarda. Then she shows the judges how sincerely she laughs when she watches my videos. <laughs> Savannah made a chicken liver mousse, panzanella salad, and shishito peppers with bean cherry vinaigrette. Raska made tart cherry sipoini onions, charred pepper relish, and berber sauce. Was gonna make a Thundercats joke, but they are not berbers, but uh, Robert Bills from Planet Robear. Not really funny, just had an opportunity to share. Just do it! And I just now realized that I am way too much of a nerd for Savannah to ever love me back. Laura made Montmorency cherry condensed milk, ice cream, and tart cherry syrup with pepper. Manny made a soy marinated roasted pork belly with sauteed and pickled cherries. Kalina made a cherry and salmon croquette with tart cherry cream. Charlie made charred golden beets with chocolate cherry demi, smashed purple potatoes, and pickled cherries. Kenny made a toasted marshmallows with rum and cherry sauce, fried cinnamon, and sugar spring roll paper. And the judges seem to like his dish more than he does. If we like this, are you gonna yuck our yum? No. Michelle made a cherry and face hugger broth with charred shrimp and bok choy. Kevin made a beef tenderloin with poilie of cherries and black garlic, whatever that means. Did I know what it is? I certainly knew that it was French for being butter braised. I didn't. Danny made a grilled skirt steak bamboo shoot and cherry gremolata with cherry gastrique. Alicia made a charred cabbage with cherry serrano reduction and lime and anchovy butter. And Dan made a kimchi pancake with kimchi cherries and bing cherry hoisin. On the bottom again was Charlie with that seemingly simplest pairing of cherries and chocolate. He took a risk using this in a beet plate and it didn't pay off. Kenny's dish was disjointed and Alicia's was undercooked. 
On the top was Savannah, Rassica, and Kevin, giving Rassica her second win in a row, $5,000 extra dollars. That makes her total $15,000 that she's won so far in the show. Wow, Rassica, wow. We love cash. I love talking paper. For the elimination challenge, Kristen makes a bold claim. There's something Wisconsinites can't live without. Cheese! <laughs> oh, I was gonna say probation. <laughs> Whatever. That's what they say. The chefs have to make a dish featuring one of the cheeses they randomly select for the judges and a hundred cheese-loving diners at the world's first and only Top Chef Bee Fest. Not the bees! Ah! Cheese festival. Sorry, I, I don't know where I got that idea. Ah! These bees, they smell fear, they know. It's one of my biggest fears besides open water. Get them out of my eyes! My eyes! Ah! The chefs all seem to have the same idea for a quick and easy dish that they can prepare on location for over 100 guests. With a potato croquette. Traditional Spanish croquette. I just need to have like the croquette in my head. Making croquettes, potato croquettes. How about you? Yeah, I'm doing croquettes too, just like half of us. But Michelle knows what's up. Everybody and their mama down is out. Michelle's right though in the fact that playing to the crowd could have a beneficial outcome as they will be picking the top three dishes. And the judges will only be deciding who leaves among the bottom three. You really gotta try to play to the audience. Amanda worries that she doesn't have the personality to play to the crowd, but I disagree. People tell me I sound like Daria. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Tom comes to make the chefs nervous while they do their prep, and Charlie drops some cream. Oh, f cream down. And yes, I'm proud of myself for not making a joke about Charlie dropping cream. Maybe it's because I'm growing. Maybe it's because I'm running out of time. It is hot. But honestly, no one has time to make jokes about dropping cream when we have to talk to five chefs about... Croquettes. 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 Ah, okay. Laura tries to explain to Tom why her croquettes will be different. And I think it's perfect to be the croquettes. Good luck, Ira. Thank you. Tom is extra spicy this round, and I fucking love it. Pull it off, it's gonna be a great dish. Yeah. If you don't, I don't know. After Tom clears out of the kitchen, Laura slips on Charlie's cream. Coming through. <laughs> which then sets a trap for Mr. Milwaukee. The floor is ah, and then Dan says what I always say to Savannah whenever she's on camera. I fall enough all on my own. I don't need anyone else to help me. It is hot. The floor is Does that make sense? <laughs> I love that instead of saying jokes, I'm just like imagining this falling in and out of love relationship with a person I will never meet. That's really not why I'm here. That is exactly why you're here. So thanks, Top Chef, for making that happen. On location in the beautiful Door County, and it looks unrobearable. It's over 100 degrees, and there are bees, 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 bees. I am stressed. The guests arrive, and I am clearly excited. It would be really nice to feel that. So let's just get to plating. Danny made a 15-year fritter cheddar lime Mornay with cheddar foam. Amanda made a Mount Ratcliffe Arancini with Mornay and Dijon sauce. Tom lets the other judges know that Alicia is... Alicia is the croquette queen of Chicago. Oh, no. Who is the wife of... The sausage king of Chicago. I'm right? so regretted telling you that. <laughs> and she made a ham and brick cheese croquette with sherry aioli. Manny made a potato croquette with gravy and cheese curds. Charlie made a yucca croquette with canela cheese and tomato mango sauce. And it was under seasoned again. I think that makes like four times now. Kalina made a Bella Vitano mac and cheese with Merlot mushrooms and breadcrumbs, and it was very tasty. Savannah made a Oaxacan cheese quesadilla with whipped avocado, hatched chili, and roasted corn salsa. Kevin made brie croquettes with Mornay, ham, and truffle. It was overpowering and too eggy. Him and Manny really struggled in the heat. Dan made Sancho Cruz Manchego potato dumplings, cheese foam, and olive tamponade. Laura made Gouda Reserve potato croquette with peach mustarda. Rasika made Dunbarton blue panieram with braised chicken korma. It's called a panieram. Michelle made a coconut curry collard green sag with Pleasant Ridge Reserve potato fritter. Kenny made a crab rangoon salad with gargonzola creme fraiche crema, lasardo cherry relish, and rice paper chip. Being late in the call sheet, Kenny's running out of ingredients and he hasn't seen any of the judges. Diners are in charge of who's winning, but the judges get to pick who goes home. I can't help but think that the way that he talks to himself in this situation kind of informs how he was feeling at the time. I just have to save what I have left and give it to the judges. On one hand, you think he has to impress the judges so they won't send him home. Um, but he's also assuming that no one's going to vote him in the middle or the top three. So I don't know. I, I felt really bad for him in this moment because he's clearly hedging his bets that he's going to lose or at least be on the bottom. At the top was Kalina, Michelle, and Dan, who all made delicious dishes that paired well with their cheeses. And Michelle wins. Kenny, Manny, and Kevin are at the bottom. 
Charlie must have barely made it out of this list. I can't help but think that if Kenny hadn't run out of ingredients, would Charlie be in this list? It's hard to say. Kenny tried to correct his lack of relish by spooning the juice from the relish onto the crab. I think this was a bad decision. It made a bad wet time even wetter. And that's Moist Pallone's job. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you know, if you don't get that joke, then I know you didn't watch the first episode. How dare you, all 50 of you. With Kevin's second time in a row at the bottom, he struggled with the heat and the time. Manny had the same problem. His dish would have worked if he had more time and a different environment, but he didn't make a plan B. Again, focusing his time on the fried portion instead of the cheese. Sadly, I called it. And they sent Kenny home. He seems like a terrific chef, and he clearly takes it like a champ. He does not make it through Last Chance Kitchen, where number 16's hue is really, you know, turning out to be a force to be reckoned with. I could say don't count yourself out before you've lost, but that also means you can't take your eye off the ball. A bad opportunity taken is oftentimes worse than a missed good one. Uh, either way, I think we'll miss Kenny. He's a pretty cool dude. And I'll see you guys next week. that like 50 times you're making yourself hate yourself editing this gonna be a bitch i don't care because that's you tomorrow live your life i'm just joking i don't need it i do need it please watch please watch and subscribe <laughs>